Well, on September 20th, young people from all over the world are coming together and demanding that enough is enough, but we're not alone. We're going to be joined by our elders. It's going to be an intergenerational climate strike um, where people are striking from work, school, everything that is their business as usual to show how we must end and halt all business as usual on climate change because we cannot have business as usual on an unlivable planet. So we're really breaking the rules, halting, um, stopping the world for a day or a week um, and really bringing that new level of mobilization because this is zero hour to act on climate change. There's no more time left. Jamie, thank you so much for being here. You are a veteran on Think 100%, the coolest show on climate change. But for those who may not know who you are, for the uneducated, tell us, who are you, Jamie? Who are you? Hi, my name is Jamie. I'm a 17-year-old climate justice activist from Seattle, Washington. I'm a founder of Zero Hour, the youth climate justice movement that led the youth climate march in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 2018 and in 25 cities around the world, which sparked the groundwork for what is now the global climate strike movement. Mm -hmm. uh, we organized um, a youth climate summit in Miami, and we focus on doing mobilizations um, and urgency surrounding the urgency of the climate crisis and addressing the root systems of oppression that caused this issue. Um, me personally, I'm also a writer slash author. I write um, a bunch of different op-eds and editorials about the climate crisis and other issues. And I have a book coming out in um, oh. a year, next year, um, in June of 2019, called Youth to Power, Your Voice and How to Use It, which is gonna be like the ultimate guide to being a young activist based on everything that I've learned. So yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm looking forward to reading that. That is awesome. I did not know you were an author. Very, very, very dope, Jamie. Um, so tell us now, what is this big, crazy, amazing thing happening on September 20th? Well, on September 20th, young people from all over the world are coming together and demanding that enough is enough, but we're not alone. We're going to be joined by our elders. It's going to be an intergenerational climate strike um, where people are striking from work, school, everything that is their business as usual to show how we must end and halt all business as usual on climate change um, because we cannot have business as usual on an unlivable planet. So we're really breaking the rules, halting, um, stopping the world for a day or a week um, and really bringing that new level of mobilization because this is zero hour to act on climate change. There's no more time left and um, the time is ticking. And so leading up to the UN climate summit, everyone is gonna be mobilizing in all corners of the earth. That is amazing. So with that organizing, what is being called for? What are, what are, what are, what are the demands? What are we asking for? So A, we're asking for just every city, state, and country to demand a climate, to declare a climate emergency, a state of emergency, that the world starts treating this within a state of emergency. Uh, and then we're also asking for um, an immediate halt to all new fossil fuel infrastructure, because um, the first step to getting out of a hole is to stop digging. Um, hmm. Calling for um, the defunding of like all fossil fuel infrastructure and no more investment in pipelines, no more investment for all colleges and institutions to divest so that industry cannot continue. And then transitioning all of that, you know, that money and those workers and everything into the renewable energy workforce. Um, so having a just transition where no one is left behind, um, halting all deforestation of the Amazon rainforest and other big natural um, wonders that are contribute to the health of our planet. Um, putting in like emissions regulations and just halting the cause of the problem and then creating solutions for it is really what we're demanding. But an end to business as usual is this, what I would say in a nutshell. That is awesome. Um, who's putting this together? This so this is a coalition movement. Um, so the climate strikes are being organized by many different organizations. There is no one central organization that is organizing them all. Um, so there, it's a coalition of organizations like Zero Hour and the Sunrise Movement and so many other orgs um, that, is, that is making this possible. And from the adult sector to the youth sector, everyone is getting involved. That is awesome. So now tell me, so why, why is Zero Hour working on this? Why is your organization, why do you think this is so important? 
We're working on this because it's important to put constant pressure on our institutions to take action on the climate crisis. And mobilization is a strategy that we have adopted as an organization as our main strategy. So it's very in line with the values and what we do. Um, it's a continuation of the work that we started with the Youth Climate March in 2018, which you were there for, standing in the rain with us. Um, and so we, we're just continuing that legacy and continuing that work because you, one march is not going to change us. It's constant mobilization, consistent action that is going to take us to the next level. That's awesome. Um, so why is it important for this strike to happen now? Why is it happening now? It's happening now because we're at a turning point in history where we we cannot wait a single more day on this issue. So the UN report says that we have 10 years to turn this whole crisis around, but we actually have 18 months in order to create the political situation where that is available. So in order for those rapid changes to happen, where it's not like we have 10 years to loiter, it's like within the span of 10 years, we will need to have changed everything. So, right. So within 18 months, we have to have like, the entire political system shifted all the right people in power everyone so so the strike has to happen now like the the, the revolution has to happen now in order for right, that to happen right. so yeah so yeah. true so true yes um how did you become involved and, and and what inspired you to step up well at first existential dread is what inspired me to step up initially i was just terrified for my future as someone born after 9-11 this is just has always been a reality for me just as like really long airport security lines have always been a reality for me yeah, so yeah. um but then it, it morphed into something more as i realized and i learned more and i got involved in community organizing in my city of seattle i realized that the climate crisis is intertwined with all of these other systems of oppression and all of these other issues um and that as the climate crisis gets worse, so do these other issues. And so then it was just the overall drive to make the world a better place and to just relieve these systems of oppression that are holding us back that also motivates me. And then it's also the love for my Pacific Northwest home and where my family's from in Colombia, where the Amazon is getting deforested. Mm. So it's personal. It became it's very personal. personal. It wow. became really personal real quick. Because wow. a lot of times people are affected by the climate crisis, but they just don't realize how. So then they connect the dots of like, oh, this is why I'm suffering. It's because right. of these corporations. Like I know people who live um, in communities that are getting fracked and that there's oil shale everywhere, and they're climate deniers because that that's how good the propaganda is. Like I'll give the I'll give the like my friend lives in a town where everyone's climate deniers and they're literally breathing in the fumes. Everyone's dying of cancer. Everything's polluted, and they're just like it's just steam. Oh my goodness! Wow, that's sad. Yeah, that's. Hello. Who are on the front lines don't realize that they're on the front lines, which is really sad. Right, which is why what we all do is so important to get the word out. Um, yeah. Because you're yeah. right, some people are suffering and don't even know why. Um, how has culture played a role in what you're doing? Well, I'm not the kind of person who's ever been drawn into doing anything because I saw a chart or an IPCC report or anything like that. For me, I need to see art and vibrancy and fun and music and movement. Um, I'm the girl who always has my Beats headphones in. I'm the girl who's always just dancing <laughs> to something. Um, so culture and just like, just I can't stand, you know, bland white toast Wonder Bread movements. Like that's not that's not going to mobilize anyone. So. Right. Nobody wants to be a part in of order, that. In order for the climate movement um, to be successful, like what, what brings me in is like the art and the music and the different cultures and the vibrancy and just like, it's a fun movement. I mean, we can have fun in the apocalypse, I suppose, um, or we make fun. To. We need to, because otherwise we're all just going to be like soulless hacks, just like yeah. Yeah. Uh, corporations causing this problem. So we might as well not imitate them. That is so true. Um, okay, so I want to help everybody understand how to be a part of the move uh, of the, right. the strike. So, how do people take part in it? Um, or do they have to sign up for something? Do they so go to social media? Strikewithus.org. Strikewithus.org is where you can find. Yep, it's very simple. Strikewithus.org. It's a map um, where you can see all the strikes that are happening. Um, and if there isn't one happening in your community, if you don't see it on the map, then you can add a strike that you organize yourself. And that's for the United States. If you're outside of the United States, go to FridaysForFuture.org, which has the international map of everyone. Um, but strike for strikewithus.org is the best for in state, like in the United States. Um, that's going to have your best 
best details, most updated information. And then Fridays for Future is for international. Um, you could also go to uh, follow Zero Hour's social media accounts. So at This Is Zero Hour on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, where we're posting updates and information uh, for the strike. So that's a uh, Outside of those websites, our social media accounts are going to be where we're posting a lot of information. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, so then after the strike, um, what the heck? What's next? What, after, after we strike, after we, after we hopefully mobilize so many people that our voices are heard on that day, on September 20th, what happens next? Well, after that, it's, it's an entire week of climate action because there's the next week is the um, UN Climate Summit where everyone's mobilizing around. So after that, uh, just look up your local like community organization, especially if you're in the New York City area or on the DMV area. L just Google like for environmental areas, environmental orgs in your area because there's going to be continuing action and pressure leading up to the UN Summit. After the UN Summit, we're preparing for Earth Day 50, the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So. I would say plug into the community organizations, plug into the, the the national organizations and kind of join the planning for the next thing that is happening. Because we're just going to keep mobilizing and mobilizing and planning and mobilizing until something happens. Until we win this thing. I'm with you on that. That is amazing. So let's get some fun stuff now. We got all the, all the important stuff out the way. Now we can have some hey. fun. Fun stuff. What is your favorite pizza topping? Okay, don't hate me, but I do like pineapples on pizza. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I'm I sorry. I'm not supposed to eat meat, but I, I like pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had it in a while because I haven't been eating dairy, but uh, yeah, pizza is so good. What's your favorite movie? Ooh, that changes. Right now it's Captain Marvel because, okay, just the girl power in that and also yeah, just the, the raw and just the fact that like my pet peeve with like superhero movies that star women is when it's surrounded around a male love interest like Wonder Woman it really killed the buzz for me where it's just, like about this man and I'm like what is this even about but she was just completely independent completely like screw all y'all and just emanated big energy big big gay energy which I also appreciated who's your favorite musician Ooh. I have a staple of three musicians that are just always my favorite. Okay. So um, my favorite song and musicians like will rotate, but I have three that I always come back to no matter what that are just mm -hmm. there. Lana Del Rey, Marina okay. and the Diamonds, and Haley Kiyoko. Okay. All right. I love you. Like eclectic. I yeah. see the vibe. I see the vibe. It's definitely I, a vibe there. Okay. There is a vibe there. So occasionally I interrupt it with some Princess Nokia. Do you like, do you know Princess Nokia? She's like this rapper, Bronx rapper. She's amazing. Okay, yeah. Um, that's like indigenous rapper. You should you should look her up. Okay, I will. Princess Nokia. Yeah, like yeah. the phone, Nokia phone. Okay, yes. You know, you know, you see that you gotta hip each other to stuff. That's cool. I'm gonna check her out. <laughs> what is your favorite climate documentary? Um, Awake, a dream from Standing Rock. It's mm. technically it's about the fight at Standing Rock. Documented like story like story by story it's just very in-depth it's on netflix right now so if you google on netflix awake a dream from standing rock you're going to watch a life-changing documentary highly recommend very dope frontline very battle dope. what's your favorite march chant um i guess like a staple is i'll do a chant where i'll be like where i when i say this is you say zero hour this is zero hour that's a staple that i stick to a lot okay. well you know it is zero hour we don't have no time to waste mm -hmm. um your fit your top three climate instagram accounts to follow okay my top three climate instagram accounts to follow one is zero hours account yeah. at this is zero hour mm -hmm. um Another one I would say is um, there's this one called Climate Memes, which is like really funny climate memes that are really good that I feel like I just got up on climate memes. I could, yeah, that's that's amazing. Another one is um, oh god, how do I? I think it's I don't know if it's called Decolonized Meme Queens or something like that, but it's just like indigenous perspective climate memes that are hilarious. Yeah. As well. So I think it's like decolonized meme queens. And then I would say a fourth is my account, Jamie okay. Marvel. Uh, 
Um, Y'all should follow it because I post about climate nonstop and that's And is it your name with any dots, underscores? Okay, it's my name. So J-A-M-I-E underscore S underscore my last name, Mark Olin, M-A-R-G-O-L-I-N. But that's the last one. That's the cherry on top if you want. Yes, but I've I have colonized cherry. meme queens, uh, climate memes. Um, and this is zero hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got you. See, I got I, you. Back. I'm gonna I'm gonna think of so many when we hang up. Like so many. <laughs> that was great. That was great. And it was so great talking to you. We love you here at Think 100 percent Oh, I love We're you guys so too. So grateful for everything you were doing. Keep keep Thank fighting you. a good fight. Thank we'll you. See you uh September 20th. Everybody get involved. What's that website one more time? Strikewithus.org. Strikewithus.org. And y'all follow Jamie and this and Zero Hour at this is Zero Hour. Thank you so much, Jamie. Love you. Thank you so much. Love you. <laughs> All right. Yay. That was great. So, awesome. um, Wait, yeah. What's your name? Y'all want to say goodbye to Jamie? Bye. Bye. I gotta go. Thank Bye. you so much, Jamie. So we'll uh we'll talk to you soon. I guess somebody will be in touch about what happens after we have done this, and uh we'll keep yeah, you posted on everything. You or something, yeah. Say that again. Like, I'll see it if you guys post it on Twitter. Or something. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. We'll let you know before it's coming out. Oh, she said Mark will hit you beforehand yeah, yeah, yeah. to let you okay. know the rollout situation. Sounds good. Awesome. All right, thank you. Talk to you soon.